In this video about Revit architecture, I'm going to cover the phasing tools and how they can be used to demonstrate new construction versus existing versus construction that's to be demolished. It's a very important aspect of Revit in order to communicate clearly on construction plans what the phase of work is for a general contractor. So I have this uh, very simple plan drawn and you can imagine that the uh, bottom portion of this building may be existing to remain and then the upper portion is an addition. So we need to show clearly to someone who's reading the drawings what's already constructed, what needs to be added, and then potentially what needs to be demolished. The phasing tools of Revit architecture allow that to happen, but they can be somewhat confusing to set up, so hopefully this will help. The first thing to do is to consider which phases are already established in the file, because when you use a Revit template to start a project, Normally there are some phases already there, but we may want to change how they're working. So I'm going to go to the Manage tab on the ribbon, and then click the Phases button. The phases that are listed are going to vary a little bit, depending on how your project was originally started. I'm not a big fan of how the phases are initially labeled that come with most Revit files. So what I'm going to do is change this. Instead of saying New Construction, I'm going to say Scope of Work because generally when you're making a set of technical drawings, you're making a set of drawings that represent the scope of work for a contractor to construct based on those documents. So now that I've relabeled that, we can sort the objects in the plan based upon which phase they belong in. So I'm gonna hit okay and then I can select a wall that's already drawn and decide when the um, which phase applies for when it was created and then which phase applies for when it's demolished. So any wall that is not going to be demolished as part of the project you would leave the demolished phase as none. So these are going to be existing walls to remain so I have that set as phase created and then phase demolished remains none because they're not ever going to be demolished in the near future. And then the same is true for uh, the other walls around the perimeter here. And then the walls for the addition would say scope of work for the phase created because they're part of the scope of work that would be the responsibility of the contractor when these documents are given to them. And then they would also say phase demolished none because obviously they're not going to be demolished in the near future if they're being constructed as a part of this scope of work. So the difference would be for a wall that is needs to be demolished in the scope of work. Then I would use phase created existing and then phase demolished I would say scope of work. And that's why scope of work is easier to name your phase for the documents that you're creating. Because if you say new construction then that starts to be a little confusing, at least to me it does. Demolished in the new construction, well that's kind of contradictory sounding. So I prefer scope of work because it can include building things and demolishing things all within that scope. So now that we have those walls sorted, again the labels are completely up to you. You can label them however you want. But having ones that are existing and scope of work are the easiest two options there. And then you can sort the objects into those two phases. So that's kind of your first step. Your second step is to establish uh, the views and apply the phase filter to the view. So what I mean is, I'm looking at a floor plan view right now, and I'm going to relabel this to uh, floor plan existing and demo. So that's going to be basically a demolition plan. Uh, where none of the new construction is shown, but it can be given to a contractor to see what's existing that needs to remain, and then what's existing that needs to be that needs to be demolished. So a demolition plan is a very common way to do that. Now I'm going to make a duplicate version, and then I'm going to rename this one. I'm right-clicking and hitting rename to say floor plan. Uh, construction. And then I'm going to uh, duplicate it one more time. 
and then this is going to be you can call it whatever you want a working plan or all um, because basically I leave on everything to see how the demolished walls relate to the new construction so you can call it all or um, working plan because I use it for doing the actual work in the Revit project uh, whatever makes sense to you in terms of the name so now that we have the various views set up we apply the face filters to those views in order to turn things on and off as needed so for example on the existing and demo plan um, when we're in that view we can scroll down and apply a face filter so first rather than show all for the face I would change that to scope of work and then for the face filter existing but I'm going to go back and rename that in a second to be a little bit clearer okay so the next step is to adjust my construction view so again I'm going to shut that to scope of work for the face and then my face filter is going to be new construction and then for my all view I can leave that on show all and leave the face filter as none so that everything's visible on the other hand if I want the demolished walls to show as dashed I could set this to scope of work and then leave the face filter on show all so I'm setting all the three views to scope of work and the reason I'm doing that is because um, there's I want all the views to work with the current time spot in the timeline of the project essentially so your phase option here is basically like thinking about when in the timeline do you want that view to apply and then your phase filter is where you actually set up um, what's going to be turned on and what's going to be turned off so now let's look at those phase filters and how they're working so I'm going to go to my phases again in the ribbon and the phase filters tab so for the existing phase filter I'm using this for my existing and demo plan so that means that the new work I actually want to not be displayed because basically it's going to show what's existing and what's existing to be demolished and that's it so nothing that's new is going to show up now on the new construction plan I want the demolished stuff to not show up so I'm setting that to not displayed so that way I have a view that shows the finished product at the end of the scope of work so existing I'm going to rename to be existing hyphen demo so that I can remember what that is I'm going to actually remove this demo and new one because I'm not going to use that and that's a little less confusing alright so now I can hit OK so now let's look at the difference between these so I have floor plan all which shows the existing, the demolished as dashed, and then the new construction. And then I have construction, which is the finished product at the end of the construction project. So then you have your existing to remain, and you have your new work, and then the demolished is missing because it's been demolished. And then you have existing demo, which shows existing to remain as solid lines, and dashed as dashed lines. Now I do need to clean up the walls here to make this work a little bit better. So just to review, your first step was to set up the phases and name them as you wish. Your second step is to grab those wall objects and put them on the proper phases. And your third step is to customize your views, in which case that often means making a couple extra um, views so that you have options in terms of how you're seeing the plan. And then to assign those phase filters to those views. Now, let's go back and look at the phase filters again, just to review that last step. So, on the existing demo phase filter, we're turning off the new construction because we're showing the project prior to the work occurring. Then we have existing turned on and demolished turned on. For the new construction phase filter, we're showing the project at the end of the work so then we're turning off the demolished pro construction objects and leaving on the new and existing so keep in mind these phases can be assigned to any objects not just walls doors roof furniture anything like that 
But walls are the most important aspect because it gives a general concept of what the scope of work is. That's kind of the, the easiest way to see the overview is to look for which walls are new versus existing. Going down that road, you want to make sure that they're clear graphically which ones are new versus existing. So, for example, if you look at the construction plan here, there's not an easy way to tell by looking at these two walls which one's new and which one's existing. So this still really isn't communicating quite as clearly as what we want. We really want control of line weight and hatch and um, to also graphically emphasize the scope of work in that sense. So now let's look at the graphical override abilities in your phases. So I'm going to go back to phases again. And then now I can go to phase overrides. And you can see most of these say by category if it's not turned off. So what that means is the graphics are not overridden at all. The exception is the demolished walls are overridden, and that's what's making them dashed. So anything that says overridden, rather than the normal object style settings for the line weights and all those options, uh, this is taking precedence, is whatever's on the graphic overrides tab. So again, the overrides tab right here, anything you assign here is going to take precedence over any other settings in your project in terms of line weight or line type, or color, or pattern, but that will only apply if it has been overridden here rather than saying by category. If it says by category, then it's not going to apply the graphic overrides. So in this case, why don't we make a darker line weight for new walls and then a thinner line weight for existing walls. So it already has that basically set up. You can see that the projection and cut lines are both darker for new and thinner and gray for existing. So I'm just going to try this with the default line weights first. Let's see how it looks. So back on my phase filters tab, rather than by category, I'm going to change this to overridden. And I'm going to do that for all three of these options, the existing um, phase with the existing demo filter, and then the new phase with the new filter and then the existing phase with the new filter. So now I can hit OK, and then instantly you see that the new walls are way darker graphically than the existing walls. And that really stands out because of the hatch pattern that's applied, which is obviously a solid black fill. So we may want to change the hatch, but you get the idea. It's going to be much more obvious now, and then normally that's reinforced with a legend to indicate this is the hatch and line weight for new walls, this is the hatch and line weight for existing construction. So let's look at the phase filters one more time, and then the graphic overrides. So rather than this completely black solid pattern, um, it might be a better choice to either do a gray shade or change the pattern to not be solid fill. Kind of depends on whether you're doing a coarse, fine, or medium view and what scale you're working with. Uh, just for a quick demonstration, I'm going to choose a, a diagonal line pattern so that you can see the line weight a little better. And I'm going to jack up the line weight a little bit darker just to make that really clear. All right, so now, just to make that really obvious, I made it a 7 line weight instead of a 5. But you can see how dark and bold that is for uh, the new construction versus thin and gray for the existing walls. So that's going to read really clearly to somebody when there's a legend included about what's in the scope of work and what's not. So that's the basic idea of the phase filters. So now we have a final construction plan at the end of the scope of work. We have a demo construction plan for at the beginning of the work. And then we have the all floor plan view, which is just a handy view to work in. So it's probably not going to be used in a set of construction drawings, but it's still useful for you while you're working on the plan. So the other two, the construction one and the existing demo plan, would be used in a set of technical or construction drawings for a demolition plan and then a construction plan.